Did you know that Germany, Spain and the United Kingdom can fit in the total area of South Africa or Poland and Switzerland in Zimbabwe? In today's video, we will be looking at which countries can fit in Africa while making comparisons and why the world map in relation to the comparative size of Africa is wrong and distorted. With a background on the topic as well as debunking the common perception that there are small African countries. So let's jump into today's video and as usual don't forget to like, subscribe and share. So as usual let's start off with the background and why most maps have a distorted version of Africa's relative size and the reasons for this. Odds are the mental representation of the earth and its continents in relation to where they sit to each other looks like this. Well probably because this is called the Mercator map projection and it's everywhere from popular tools like Google Maps or OpenStreetMap, various online services, your classroom walls, atlases, and many more places. However, this representation is wrong and has for centuries distorted the way in which most people view the world, especially Africa, due in part to the nature of two-dimensional maps, as flattening a three-dimensional globe onto a flat surface is mathematically impossible and some sort of distortion would have to happen. In 1569, Flemish cartographer Gerardus Mercator created the Mercator projection to help with ship navigation, which made continents closer to the poles much larger as this map preserves directional bearings. A good example of this is the Democratic Republic of Congo, which when seen on the map is much smaller than Greenland. But in reality, Greenland takes up roughly 92.38% of Congo, making it slightly smaller than the Congo. Crazy, right? This is what is referred to as the Greenland problem. The map enlarges areas at the poles to create straight lines of constant bearing or geographic direction. So it makes it easier to cross an ocean. But yes. it distorts the relative size of nations and continents. Are you saying the map is wrong? Oh dear, yes. Uh, look at Greenland. Okay. Now look at Africa. Okay. The two land masses appear to be roughly the same size. Yes. Would it blow your mind if I told you that Africa is in reality 14 times larger? Yes. This in short means that land on the Mercator map further from the equator is more stretched out. And due to Africa's central location, it does not get stretched but shrinks. Thus, its relative size is not properly represented. However, there are various map projections, all with their inaccuracies, and it was generally decided that different map projections would be used for different uses and applications most applicable. One of these being called the Gal Peters projection, which can be seen on the screen now, which most Africans should have actually known about more commonly. What makes this projection special? is that it shows the exact land mass of each continent without greatly exaggerating the size of any. In retrospect showing, sometimes size really does matter. However, the inaccuracies of this map and why it's not widely used is because sadly it is inaccurate in terms of directions as compared to the Mercator projection which shrunk the countries along the equator to provide accurate directions and readings on a map Another issue with the Gal Peters map is that certain places appear stretched horizontally near the poles and vertically near the equator. Wait, wait, relative size is one thing, but you're telling me that Germany isn't where we think it is? Nothing is where you think it is. Where is it? I'm glad you asked. The Peters projection. It has fidelity of axis. Fidelity of position. East-west lines are parallel and intersect north-south axes at right angles. What the hell is that? It's where you've been living this whole time. In terms of criticisms and reception to the Mercator map, there are many, such as a lack of reference. Because the Earth roughly is a sphere, roughly looking like a lumpy potato, every flat map distorts our planet one way or another. However, this is never really highlighted in most school curriculums and due to the Mercator being the most commonly used map, it presents a global problem. As again, no real reference to this size distortion is made 
in the classroom. So someone can grow up thinking the country of Spain is bigger than a country like Botswana, for example. Another criticism is, is that it negatively contributes to geopolitics, as the amount of territory a country occupies is often correlated with power and might. Thus, this map is often linked to imperialism and has been said to perpetuate imperialist ideologies in Europe and America in regard to Africa, as well as harming the world's perception of developing countries, as it's a fact that bigger countries are generally and psychologically perceived to be more powerful than smaller ones. Thus, this map has been coined a map made by Europe for Europe. But uh, that's just one of the criticisms, not to say it's mine. Another reception and criticism is that it's not ideal for strategy in World War. During World War II, the inaccuracies of the Mercator map were highlighted in regards to global strategy, where distorted shapes, distances and angles are incredibly dangerous, even in the case of general strategy. A great example would be the illustrations of Richard E. Harrison, who illustrated maps that proved revolutionary of a world dominated by flight during a global war. Key elements of his map included showing just how many neighbors Europe actually had and how threatening other countries are to Russia in terms of proximity and location. His map was so popular, it was widely copied so much so that the U.S. Army ordered 18,000 copies of it, as well as the United Nations logo was influenced by his projection. One final common criticism is that it's misleading the world view of billions of people. Due to being the most commonly used map projection, the Mercator is used to teach billions of people geography in school, especially in the case of African school curriculums. With the issue being this distortion of the map not really being discussed at all, if we are being honest, leading many Africans to greatly underestimate the size of their own countries and the continent as a whole, especially considering the Gulf Peters map was presented to the public in 1974 by Arno Peters, but discussed in 1885 by James Gulf. For example, when looking at the Mercator map, China, the United States, India, Japan, Western Europe, and Mexico couldn't possibly fit in Africa, but in reality, they can. And if you don't believe me, you can Google it right now. So it can be said why the Mercator is still being used is because of its historical legacy that has been present since the 16th century, when it aided captains, sailors, and adventurers who were crossing the treacherous seas. And although it has its issues and criticisms, it was indeed created for a specific reason, not just to make developing countries look small. And that there are no perfect flat surface maps as the Earth is a sphere, in more in the shape of a lumpy potato. Thus we have various map projections available to us today. So if you want to see a true representation of the Earth, it's better to just get a glue for a reflective representation. So, if you enjoyed today's video, please do let me know your thoughts in the comments and let us continue to learn new things about Africa together. So, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will catch me in the next video.